Okay. I've wanted to do this video for a while, but I didn't really know what to say. Um, as we know, Bam Bam uh, from the channel Bam Bam's World has passed away. I nearly leant in and corrected her then. I nearly leant in and went Bin Bin. Like thinking that it is Bin Bin because uh, I've, you know, done that in my brain. I thought she was called Alexandria, but on the obituary thing it had a different name, but it doesn't matter. No, I'm not out to... Well, it kind of does because she's dead. I mean, it's her name, but you know what I mean. Family or hurt anybody. But I'm going to be honest and not mince my words. Can you hear Val all right? Because she's quite quiet. So I've been sitting quietly, watching, reading the comments and thinking, do I say something or not? Now, I haven't said anything up to now because I really didn't know what to say because I actually felt nothing. No, seriously, I really didn't feel anything and that was kind of worrying because most of the time when someone dies, it's normal to experience some kind of emotion. Oosh, she's quiet, okay. We're gonna bin off the background music entirely then and I'll boost up the sound. Uh, she was just saying that she didn't feel anything. I hope you caught that, I could rewind it. Um, and it's usually to f feel some sort of emotion. It may be that she felt shock first or didn't feel anything because of shock. Um, but I personally, as soon as I f heard the news, um, I decided to write a post on it. And when I wrote the post, I felt emotional. Like, you know, any kind of loss and thinking about any other people's loss, even people that I don't like, well, I don't know her parents, so I don't know her family or anything, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, it still made me feel tearful, yeah. So, um, but... I, I thought that would be the same for most of them, especially people that have been deep entrenched in the, the row, because it's all of a sudden, like, even if it's someone, like I said, that you don't agree with or get on with, it's someone that you like, is quite big, so to speak, in the in the, the framework of life in some way. I don't know, like, you know what I mean? But, but I think... So I rewind that picture so you can hear it. I haven't said anything up to now because I really didn't know what to say because I actually felt nothing, no. Seriously, I really didn't feel anything and that was kind of worrying because most of the time when someone dies, it's normal to experience some kind of emotion. But I think after the verbal abuse, the threats that Bam's put me and many other through, it's kind of killed that side of my thoughts towards Bam. My the only thoughts I tend to true. You know, I only had one stream that I listened to where she was abusing me. me. So if she didn't abuse me any further, I didn't listen to it. But they've had a lot longer, haven't they? They've had years of it. So have with like contradictory thoughts, and I really didn't know what's coming or going. So I left it until I knew exactly what I wanted to say. I also read some comments that saying she was wonderful and she had one of the most beautiful hearts, and she was a joy to listen to. I wouldn't go that far. See the saying that you should never speak ill of the dead came to my mind. Yeah. Which, when I kind of looked into and, and wanted to sort of watch videos and what other people thought about that say, I actually found out that it was first said in 600 BC. And then I worked that out and calculated it on my Google. That's over 2,000 years ago. I thought, wow, that is a bit outdated now considering what the world we have today. <laughs> See, back then they had no devices where millions of people <laughs> can hear or read something within a split second. I do, you know, that's a really interesting point. You know, traditions do get outdated and we do just discard them when they become useless to us, or should. Uh, but <laughs> I hadn't thought about it in that way. And, um, like, I, you know, I've made my point quite clear before this anyway, but I'll just quickly reiterate. I think don't speak ill of the dead doesn't mean ever, like never. Once they're dead, they get a free pass. But I do think that uh, in the short term, it's probably just a little bit, well, I'll say classier, I guess. It's not, I'm not trying to be like high class, low class, working class or anything, but you know what I mean? Decorum. It's just a little bit more polite to just sort of give it some space. And then you can wade in. And this is why we use the phrase too soon when we make jokes. You know, when someone's like a public figure or something like that and people make a joke and you go, oh, too soon too soon like there's never a time that it's too soon for humor i think but for outright malice like sometimes it does feel a little bit too soon and whether you're right or wrong in that malice uh it reflects back on you like you end up looking like a bit of a bad chuffer if you're sort of hungrily gloating over someone's death so um 
I don't think that's the case here now because, like I said, I think there's been enough time for us to settle so people can start talking. Personally, I'd do it after the funeral, but I don't know exa exactly when that is and I'm not critiquing Val at all here. ...of it being put out there all over the world. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have social media, no forums, no platforms to incite. I don't think Bam... I see your comment there. Uh, you don't realize what I'm saying. Your favourite comment was Bam is like Marmite. You either love or a hater. But I don't think it's quite like that because um, the reason Bar Marmite used that slogan is a lot of people think they don't like Marmite. Oh, I don't like Marmite. Oh, it's actually an acquired taste. And it actually... Like, a lot of tastes... This is me being a bit fucking pedantic here, but uh, a lot of tastes are acquired tastes because that's how we acquire taste. So the only real taste that you enjoy as a baby is sugar and then everything else you sort of acquire. And... There's an umami flavour in Marmite. There's vi beneficial vitamins. There's B12. So it's quite easy to acquire the taste. So when they say you either love it or you hate it, they create this dichotomy. And people say, well, I, I don't really like it, so I must hate it. Or I don't know. I kind of like it. It's all right. I must love it. Like, And it pushes people from being just someone who thinks it's all right or considers tasting it. And then once you acquire the taste a bit, you now love it. It's put a very strong emotional. So I don't even think that's true about Marmite. But... <laughs> But I don't even think it's true about Val, uh, sorry, not Val, Bam either, because I think everybody didn't like her, apart from a few nasty people who were like her, if that makes sense. You know, if you also were snide and venomous and, you know, banned from other chats, then you might fall into line with her. But I don't think there were that many people who really did like her. Only a few, and like a couple of naive ones, a couple of push arounds, and a couple of bitter people. But she didn't have a big crowd. Whereas the people that she offended and people that heard her talking and thought, I don't like this, was in great swathes. Like great swathes. To hurt and to abuse and form groups. Is this video of, of the woods that we're watching, which I'm not really watching, but that video of the woods that we've got going on behind us, is that the Blair Witch Project? Is she saying she's. Just to defame and troll the innocent. And I doubt narcissists had even been invented back then. Isn't it time we scrapped that saying? Don't you think it's kind of outdated? And we should have the freedom to speak the truth of the dead. Yeah. When Bam Bam was alive, she was volatile, hateful. Bam Bam terrorised this community. And now she's passed. Does that mean we can never speak about her abuse ever again? No. Because of the saying? No, it means you can talk about Don't it. Don't speak ill of the dead? No. Abusing people on a public forum, defaming, hurting and pushing people into taking their lives, yeah? Is that good? That person made that decision to hurt people the time they spoke it. It's their responsibility. It's... To me, they lose respect. Dead or alive. No, I kind of agree with that, yeah, but also they... The people that she spoke about answered back while she was alive. Like, the difference when someone's dead is that they can't, like... You know, she can't answer back now, so it's a one-way conversation. Which is fine, I guess, but, like... You know, it's not like people didn't say what they thought back then either. Pain. In fact, I think more people will feel emboldened to speak out now because they're not scared of the threat of BAM, whereas before they might have kept quiet because they were scared of her. They not, not Val, obviously, but, you know, others. Having their wake can't be brushed under the carpet and suddenly, oh, they were such a lovely person. No, sorry. No. See, that saying may work in a close family environment where it stays. But that saying doesn't work in the public. Worldwide abuse, lies and hate for others. Inciting attacks, causing traumas and terrorising the vulnerable. No. Anyone spending years abusing people on the internet, it leaves a very traumatic, hateful and malicious legacy, is that the word, in their wake? This can't be ignored. Those who have been abused, not only by... Bam. See, like, I agree, yeah, but I think there's almost like a social tipping point of, um, like, you do a bad crime, you go to prison, you're a bad chuffer, no one cares, you die, you know, no one cares. Uh, you do a Jimmy Savile or, you know, you do a Hitler. And, like, but Bam is really just some woman, who, or well, she was, just some woman at, at home just ranting into a, a YouTube camera, like, not even a camera, like... You know, saying hateful things, yes. Saying horrible things, yes. Probably behind the scenes as well, which I'm not aware of, doing even more malicious and horrible things, yes. But to the wider community, 
to society, uh, no one knew who she was or what she was doing because it was within a very small niche like of particular people within a small niche of particular YouTube community. So um, I'm not saying they shouldn't speak about it and have their feelings and speak about it, not at all. But I'm also saying that there's like a social, I feel like there's like a social tipping point where someone has, like you said in chat about bad chuffers, a bad chuffer. Like when someone's like a fully bad chuffer, like, and they sort of deserve this lack of respect after they die or don't deserve respect after they die. Um, there's some sort of social tipping point. I don't know if this, if Bam's behaviour fits the criteria for the entire society social tipping point. Um, I guess it depends who's listening to what you say as well, doesn't it? About where you're putting it and what you're saying. Like, to anyone that doesn't know what's going on, they might just walk into the room and say, oh, everyone's being quite mean about this woman who died. What did she do? She said some bad stuff about people. Oh, well, you know, I bet they're happy to be able to say what they think now. Like, and it's not a big deal, I guess. But anyway, no, we'll carry on. I, I'm not trying to defend Bam Bam there. I'm just saying, like, um, I appreciate what Val was saying about bad people don't deserve respect after they die. And I thought, in my mind, there was a sort of tipping point of how bad they are before wider society deems that like, if I went on, here's a good example. If I went on Twitch, sorry, I'm on Twitch now. If I went on TikTok, sorry, TikTok, Twitter, there's the one. If I went on Twitter and made some sort of uh, mean joke about her being dead, like some sort of Madeleine McCann crude joke about her death, you know, some crude, crude joke, like, uh, some people would go, oh, it's too soon. Or some people would just think it's funny and crude. And some people would go, oh, I can't believe you're doing that about someone who died, you know. Um, but if you did it about Hitler or if you did it about, like, Mussolini or, you know what I mean, someone who's, like, socially tipped that balance where you can joke about them because they're a horrible bad chuffer without anyone questioning it. Like, I don't know if Bal, sorry, I don't know if Bam has found herself completely in that category for me to joke about in a public sphere on Twitter, for example, and not have some random people say, well, that's a bit... You know, so it's just weird. That's social, social. That's not my judgments. That's not my feelings. And telling people what they should and shouldn't say. That's what I think society is like. But, for instance, but anyone who has since passed, victims need to talk about the. Abuse. Oh, you didn't agree with that? Okay, well, I'm not saying you did. You know, I'm just saying I agree that a bad chuffer is a bad chuffer, and that like, if someone's bad, then you can talk about the bad things they did. Like. I'm just extrapolating ideas and thinking about them while Val's talking about this stuff. So she's brought up some interesting concepts. And in some way, I feel like I'm defending the position of don't speak ill of the dead, simply because when it first happened, I felt that you didn't, like I was brought up to think and to, to, to not do anything um, negative and, you know, let that dust settle, let the funeral happen. And then between your own circles and in the other spaces, you can start talking. Uh, but to like let the family have their grieving sort of thing without tainting it by trying to, start shouting my own opinion about stuff like that it was just like a time sort of buffer that i needed to uh respect they need a place to share their experience no one has the right to condemn those that were victimized we all must be able to speak honestly of the dead even if being honest means speaking ill or the truth however you see it Survivors need to share the truth and heal. We can't expect the abused, the victims, to stay quiet. They need to acknowledge what's been happening and not be silenced by those who believe. Don't speak ill of the dead, saying. If the abuser didn't respect people when they were alive, why should we respect them in their death? It's not that I'm trying to respect Bam Bam in her death. Although a certain amount of respect I showed you, know, I said nice, kind words. I um, on the community post, I based you know it's copy and paste essentially, but it's the words of Young, uh, Sebastian Young. So it's not religious specifically. In case you know anyone had specific feelings about anything like that, it's just kind words, like a little short, you know, good luck, go off to heaven, enjoy yourself, like sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's more for her family. You know, she's dead now. I don't expect her to have an opinion on what I say and, and do. Yeah? So why should I respect her? Like, after a funeral, in time, I'm sure people will say some quite disrespectful things. She obviously did in her life. I'm sure. That's fine. But it's the family, isn't it? It's the people who are grieving. The people, even on YouTube, there are people that felt 
they were friends of hers on her side. Like they've just lost one. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's kind of not for me. Or for me, I don't think I should be there going, ah, you've lost one. Fuck you. She was horrible. Um, I'd just be like, you know, nice about it. But um, so it's out of respect for other people, not Bam Bam. That's the point, I think, when, I mean, that's what I understand of it. I know there's different, she's talking about specifically an old colloquialism, don't speak ill of the dead. So I'm not defending that. And I don't know if she saw what I said. And is, you know, I don't, obviously I feel like I sort of um, made a point in this way. So it might be that she's, I don't think Val is actually responding to what I said. I think maybe other people have said, don't speak ill of the dead. And she's talking about that as a general concept. But I feel like I'm defending the position because I sort of took that position myself. Um, and I've made it clear now, haven't I? I'm repeating myself now, aren't I? But uh, but yeah, at that point there, I think for me, it's about respecting the other people, like I've said, the people who might attend her funeral or look online or whatever um, in the wake of her death rather than her herself. Dead saying. If the abuser didn't respect people when they were alive, why should we respect them in their death? I think we should just respect the living. The living hurt by the abused. That's where my respect goes anyway. Yeah, I respect them too. See, no one is entirely good or bad, we know that. But Bam did a very bloody good, deliberate job of making people's lives as awful as she possibly could. Um, I'd have to hear more, you know. And I know that I've been told behind the scenes she did bad stuff, you know. Like, whether it be phone calls or... Like someone, she had you know trouble at their work, didn't she? She called their work and stuff like that. So that was pretty out of line. But like, I feel in Val's tone, like this, like, you know, Val's had problems with other people who have stalked her and done bad stuff. Yeah. So Bin Bin's in that group for her, and there's sort of like, like I don't know how um, complex and horrible and direct. Like when I say direct, I don't mean making a YouTube video saying bad things. I mean, like, going beyond that line and into people's private lives. You know, I don't know how much of that has happened from Bam Bam to Val or any of her friends, so I can't really comment on that, but it sounds like quite a lot, and she's pretty cross about it still, so... The abuse, the harassment on individuals... The that's it. It was Alana Morley, that wasn't it, yeah. I thought her name was Alexandra, but Alana Morley, that's it. Lies degrading people see i was i'm strong and i gave back i know that maybe i deserved some of it i don't know but people all people don't have the strength that i do or that some people do that like like victims who are already at their limits like the rusex for instance who bam tried to destroy with lies aired to the world about them and their murdered family, Shannon right, Bella so is, uh, That's where we're getting, you see, I knew there, were, there was something else, and I'm being naive there, obviously, because I didn't re realise the Rusex thing. This is the, the nerve point here, isn't it? The touch nerve. I, I don't know exactly what Bam said about, you know, I'm the wrong person to necessarily commentate on this, aren't I? Because like, I don't know exactly what she said about the Rusex. I've always tried to distance myself from a five-year-old spat between the victims of, like, between the people who... Because, you know the family of Shannon Watts and all that, and you know I've, I've just I, because I'm not part of it. I don't want to end up in their argument, do I? So I've just absolutely distanced myself from it. Not to say that I'm on one side nor the other. Um, obviously, I think Val and certain people have, you know, I, I have much more compassion for. But um, she obviously said a lot of bad stuff on her channel. I don't know. I don't know how much, you know, how deep and whatever it ran. You know what I mean? So I, um, I don't want to say that because I feel like this is quite harsh coming. Like, in my opinion, if Bin Bin's just been saying bad stuff on her channel about people, this seems like quite a harsh uh, response from, from Val. But obviously there's a lot more behind the scenes that... And I'm, I'm not trying to be stupid about this, you know. And, uh, so it may... You know, it... Could be quite legitimate... Val's like Val's feelings. I'm not saying could be quite legitimate. Are quite legitimate. I just don't understand where exactly they're they're sprung from. So, like. it was disgusting and to me unforgivable. Bam also admitted that she was proud of being a psychopath. Psychopath's traits are like no em empathy or remorse and dishonesty and narcissism. 
exploitative, false, they have false charm. And this is to manipulate, obviously, many, many other things I'm not going to go into. But Bam was also happy proclaiming she's pushed people to suicide. It's things like this that I find very hard to believe that a psychopath is a true, honest, loving friend to anyone. Psychopaths will make friends, of course, yeah. You know, they still still be liked and loved by anybody. It could be that she was, and she was just proclaiming it loudly to the world, or it could be that she was trying to scare people into thinking she was so that they would be more frightened of her because actually she was a bit more vulnerable. Like, one of the things that you... I don't know how to quite, you know, well, I just say what I think and it just comes out, eh? But um, Bam Bam seemed to be living, like, not a wonderful, extravagant lifestyle. Like, she didn't seem to be in a very strong position in her life generally. So it might be that she was trying to project something that she was feeling quite, you know, internally conflicted and vulnerable about. So I don't know if when she said she was a psychopath. Like, it's like listening to someone at school going on about stuff. Like, it felt very schoolyard to me. Like, the level of, like, vitriol and aggression about stuff that like she didn't know me at all she had no idea who i was or anything all of a sudden you're a fucking this and i'm gonna fucking that and that you know it's just like all right yeah so since i know that you don't know anything about me and you've got no reason to be angry this is you and your performance of anger rather than me actually causing this anger in you yeah so like once you finish shouting and you've calmed down from all that, what well, actually, who are you underneath that sort of thing? Do you know what I mean? Um, and I understand that Val's saying, no, like, who she is, is that shouting and that horrible? Like, it's just I don't take everything she said at face value or none of it because I heard her saying loads of lies, yeah? So when she said she was a psychopath, I didn't know if that was true either, diagnosed or not. When she said she had a degree, I don't know if that was true or not. You know, I just, I took none of it with face value and all of it with a pinch of salt. But, but even if they are incapable of living back... But the manipulation they do to get that love. Um, curious cat. Apparently, it was cancer. Uh, I don't think. I think she's been like this for five years on the internet. So I don't think it had progressed that far that early on, and she was at her worst earlier on. So. No, they make you give them the love and supply back that they need. It's a one-way road, guys. They need the admiration. I wouldn't listen to the rumours over in Dolly's mom, certainly not what Alan said. Um, the, you know, the official forms and stuff, like the official, uh, what do you call it, statement from the family that Martin Dean put up, said it, didn't it? Like, yeah, I think it was much more likely just, like, yeah. If they were bad all the time, they would be hated by everyone. And they couldn't survive that. They need the ego and the supply. They need the love and adoration, so they fake it. True. Friendship with a psychopath, it's tailor-made for each person that they meet. True. They set also, up victims. You know, they... I agree. You know, we all know about the narcissist around here, don't we? So, um, you know, with our experience of Alan, with having Steve on the show, with watching Val Val's videos, and like, I know about the narcissist, yeah. So uh, the narcissist does do that. They have these fake friendships, and a lot of the people that, um, seem to come out in support of Bim, Bam Bam. Uh, they seem to be quite naive people who are easily manipulated. So, so yeah. Groom and manipulate with a goal of just to take advantage of them. It's all about them. They're charming, but most friendships are a prop for their own gain. For goodness sake, guys, you've got to understand. They will give the impression that their friendship is real. But you fail them in any way and you are the next target to be obliterated i've been there and got the t-shirt the dynamic with a psychopath relationship is different with each person guys you've got to understand that that's why the comments are so conflicting or either that was a case of birds of a feather stick together i want to celebrate people i want to celebrate the good in people the life of those who deserve who respect you know not protect the ones that when they're alive, they're abusers. And so what? We should never speak ill of the dead. Why? Because the dead can no longer hurt us. No, not true. Seriously, the trauma of verbal abuse leaves long-term symptoms, depression, anxiety, humiliation. And the worst cases of abuse, PTSD and much more. The pain that these abusers online, offline, it doesn't stop existing just because they're gone. 
The dead can't defend themselves, obviously. Sorry, but people abused while Bam was alive, they tried to defend themselves. And they were denied that. They just got attacked by Bam and many other people. Now Bam's gone. Let the victims defend themselves. Let them now speak out. Yeah, true that. Without criticism or being trolled or threats of being battered and dragged down the street naked. For someone to abuse and okay, vilify sorry. and defame and, and demean people on such a great big... So she's obviously... Obviously I made... A, I didn't put it on YouTube or anything, but I made a comment, didn't I, about, like, you know, I put a community post or whatever. Um, I thought Val might have been... You know, when I said don't speak of the dead, meaning... Uh, let's give it some time until after the funeral and then we should talk about it if you want. I, uh, I thought I was having... I felt defensive because she's saying this and I'd said that, yeah? But now I realise it's not me that I'm being... Like, it's not me that said stuff that she's feeling angry about uh, necessarily, if she is feeling angry. Um, it's uh, other people haven't... Like, someone's threatened to drag someone down the street and batter them. So, um, yeah, obviously, maybe Bam Bam's troll friends are getting extra eggy about the idea that someone or anyone might say anything bad about her now. Um, and they can shut up, frankly, can't they? So like, that is not for them to start trying to claim the throne of next BAM, is it? Like They can just shut up and go away now. Like, Big bloody scale in front of thousands, like BAM did. <laughs> Sorry, but they don't deserve the don't speak ill of the dead saying to be used on them. It's easy to forget the bad actions and only remember the good ones. <sighs> but that does not help victims. Nope. Remember, bad people can pretend to be good, but good people do not pretend to be bad. Do we just ignore the pain they caused and this isn't very just funny, praise is it? them for what they did that was good? No, I'm sorry, but that's not... No. What I saw of Baum, I never saw any good, so... Do I just stay stum and say nothing? No. If I think there's a lesson, if I think there's something we can learn, I'll speak out. So please don't ever shame anyone who needs to share their experience and speak the truth about the abuser, dead or alive. What, child molesters and serial killers, murderers? Is it okay to speak about them? Hmm? Who decides? Who we can share the truth about after death? No one. Well, so it could depend on person. That's what we call a social construct. Again, like uh, there's like an unwritten social rule that this is how society works. Like no one actually writes it down, but through everyone else's approval or disapproval, sort of public murmurings, you get to know where the lines are drawn. And some people don't quite, and there's a grey area. But you know, is it too soon to make a joke about X, Y, Z? Like, you know, that's social decisions, isn't it? That's like, and society is a bit more different now because you've got the internet and all sorts. But you know, you'll get pushed back when you cross the line. You'll know it. <laughs> like, uh, society decides on mass, sort of thing. The majority. The morals, probably. What? Whether we speak up. My morals say, speak the truth. Speak up. Stand up for the victims. Living. That's why I felt that this video was needed. Um, no matter how awful she was, I don't think today's the day for this, how our kids must feel. It's, well, I, I agree and disagree. I mean, like I said, I, I, we don't do Mother's Day very big in my house, so it doesn't feel like a very big day here, but um, I understand everyone else's feelings. Like, I, I don't think her kids would probably turn on Val's channel and listen to her. Like, I really don't, but I do appreciate what you're saying. It could have been saved till tomorrow, couldn't it? Um, or I don't know when her funeral is, but the day after her funeral would be like day one of... The rest of like it's like you're giving it that grace period haven't you so um i don't know if val herself like thought carefully about is it mother's day am i causing further um pain in that way like i don't know like i, said, I don't know if it's necessarily on her shoulders to have to if she feels like it's been long enough and um, she's making a very clear point that if someone's been abusive there's a victim and so the victim has the right to talk so don't shut them down with old colloquialisms like we don't speak ill of the dead because that's an old fashioned way of shutting up people who need to voice their, like they're still the victims. So they get still get to speak. Yeah. Like it's like, we shouldn't victim shame. We shouldn't victim blame. We shouldn't shut them down. We should like give them the microphone for their voice sort of thing. Um, so I get that. Uh, at the same time, it's like, 
this on a scale here, counterbalanced with everything I've been taught about politeness and um, decorum and behaviour, like drummed into me by reasonably good parenting, I think, in certain aspects, like, uh, and also society and social norms and values, and it's weighed against how bad is Val, sorry, Val, how bad has been Bam Bam been, and how important are the victims like obviously they're enshrined in this like victim's testimony from abuse is enshrined in a sort of um, holy bubble isn't it where it, it, you can't say how important it is it's, oh it's super important it always goes on the top but this is the scales so that's happening and I can't help it I'm a human being I've got those scales going on so why do we why do we take so much issue with criticism of the dead but we have no problem at all with criticising the living I'm sorry but death is not a get out of accountability clause it's hard trying to find a way to remain true to your experience. I can answer well that as well. Um, no, it's not a get out of accountability clause. And we don't always feel so bad about talking about it, like about saying the things. But what we feel bad about is the perception in society of how um, tactless or... Uh, I don't know what the word is. See, maybe I'm not posh enough to know the right words. But there's a... You know, I keep using the word decorum because I think it's just kind of the right word. Like, what would the Queen do? <laughs> It's a politeness thing. It's a amongst like if it was just us, just you know having a little bottle of wine and just chatting about. Oh my God, she's died. Oh, do you remember when she did this? And can you believe that? Like spooky heel of the dead, all you like. But go out into the pub and say it to everyone. Ding, ding, ding. Here's a speech about Bam. Right, this, 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 and this. It's different, isn't it? You know, it's time, place. It's not the words that we say and the feelings that we have necessarily. It's how we feel broadcasting them out in public and um, sharing them in that way and about whether we feel or society feels that we should feel um, that it's appropriate and um, tasteful. Sensitive to others, yeah. Opening up about how that person hurt you, obviously it's not going to be well received by loads. Big up it's Rainbow Tyrone. We all have our own opinions. So, please share yours in the comments. And any trolls or ignorant rude comments I'll be removing them. And also harassing people and saying, oh, she did this when she was alive and she was good at this and she did that for you. And no, it doesn't work with me. It doesn't work at all. Ted Bundy, what? He was, he was a Samaritan, for goodness sake, once. And Jimmy Savile, what? He did charity work and made thousands for hospitals whilst abusing the patients at the same time. Yeah, so don't give me that. The good does not negate the bad abusers have done. So this is a safe place to share. And my support is with the abused, not the abuser. It's sad that Bam held so much hate and venom for others. But I do hope she's now at peace. So following, I have added clips of Bam Bam's language threats. I can't help myself. Did you see the smile come over me then? I thought, oh my fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Do you know I don't get in trouble because I'm broadcasting this vicariously? Yeah, I'm allowed to broadcast this and have all of the thoughts and feelings that I have, and just listen to what she's got to put on her video. I'm not casting big, heavy judgments on Val. You know, I'm not casting judgments on people who feel they're victim or are victims and want to say things in their way. I'm not really casting much judgment at all. The judgment I have about speak ill of the dead is upon me what I should do, how I feel about it. When I see other people behaving in different ways, I might, you know, secretly, internally judge them against my values, against my morals, you know, I might judge them against that. But I'm not going to go out there and say, right, you failed the judgment, you have to behave differently. Uh, it's just, I'll behave how I want, you behave how you want. That's how it is, isn't it? So, like, the end of the video is not nice to watch. What, I've, got to, I've got to see some of it. I've got to see some of it. I mean, it's going to make me laugh in a way. <laughs> Defamation. And I mean, I've got a whole, um, I don't know how long of recording of it. Like, she went on and on. I couldn't record it all, but um, I've got a whole recording of, of Bam somewhere on one of my hard drives. Obviously, I won't need it now, will I? Because, like, you know, there's not going to be any police action against her now, but I, I might save it just for fun. Like, she was going fuck eggy about me. Right. Volatile language, but 
if you don't want to watch it don't turn it off but I'm not pushing I'm not pushing it under the carpet those of you that think Bam was a good person watch the next section and you make your mind up and if you still think she's a good person after watching this take a look at yourself yeah I saw the other channel thanks for watching yeah. You've got no idea how venomous and evil I can get. I mean, that exactly sounds, it's not exactly like her voice. You don't have to um, voice change it now, do you? Because she's died, I think. But uh, Psychopath, put my back against the wall and I'll... But it's pretty much how she sounds, isn't it? Probably kill you. Tell you I'll rip your kid, you fucking piece. That's one of the famous ones. But yeah. is your daughter starting to show signs of being a little whore like you? Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't need to hear all this. Like, I, I can imagine it all in my head. <laughs> Uh, you're right i don't need it like i've heard all this so many times other places other videos you know jumping in and out here and there like i know i like i could do you a eight hour stream of this myself without any prompting just really off i'd have to get probably drunk in order to keep it running but i could run my mouth with just horror horrible and like it's not I, a skill i've done that twice bro are you going to be meeting me in real life and that's not a threat it's a that's what she said about me as well i can promise She's going to send people around my house and the police. She got all friends in the police and they were all coming and all that. Um, but yeah, that was like, you know, she got, it was like Alan, she had a script, didn't she? That she used to get into and rattle off. Uh, I'm just looking through the comments a little bit. Everyone's being fairly placid in the comments, you know, saying things along the lines of I agree or she was bad, now she's gone. Right, you know. Some couple of people are picking out a couple of you know, particular things she said, but that's fair enough as well, isn't it? I'll tell you what's interesting about it is Val basically said, you don't have to speak ill of the dead, you can say what you want. Bam was bad, but she didn't pick it up. At the end, she's put up a little showreel of her being bad, but she hasn't really said much else other than that, has she? She hasn't, like, you know... I guess, if I'm honest, I think that Val and everyone else also feels like everything's been said already anyway. Everyone kind of knows it. Like, what else can you say about it? But if people do want to... Speak out in inverted commas. Like I think there would be some people who felt afraid to to do stuff while she was alive because she did throw around an intimidating presence to some. Uh, so maybe there are people that want to come out and speak and say some stuff. But in general, I think most people have sort of said what they felt. Like there was quite a lot of back and forth going on. So I'd, um, next we've got Simcast. More than a woman, more than a lover, more than a woman. <laughs> And I'm sorry about everyone in chat who's missing their moms or whatever. Like, you know, um, yeah, I don't want to make a big sort of like, you know, emotional thing of it. It's, to me, it's just like a Sunday stream, really. And it just happens to be a day where you're supposed to buy cards and do stuff. But our family doesn't really do a big thing of it. So, uh, yeah. Just two, two days, basically. And... Um... She's actually coming back later to pick up the rest of her stuff. And by the time I post this uh, or publish this podcast, she would have gone back home. Um, she wanted to come around Tuesday night, but Monday night I got no sleep at all. So um, I said, come around Wednesday night. Wednesday night we had a lot of fun. Um, She's talking about her mum, not Bam. And music videos and YouTube. And the place looked really nice because I had candles lit everywhere. There was about 30 candles lit. And my mum came in and said, what is a celebration? <laughs> um, but, you know, I just like to have a lot of candles lit. And um, the place just looks so beautiful with all those candles. And, um, you know, we had a talk about certain things. But, you know, I... Her mum said, what's the celebration? She had all the candles lit. And she said, oh, I just like to have the candles lit. She's done a shrine for Bam. She feels devastated that Bam died and she's got a massive shrine to Bam. All the candles. You shouldn't have them on while you're out.
Sound like she went to pick up her mum and she come in, the candles were already lit. You shouldn't have them on while you're out, you burn your house down. Right, next thing. Then they had a little chat and she was like, just talked about some stuff. She talked about Bam straight off. She's like, Bam died. I've got to be honest with you. I'm not feeling great. Um, you know, it's been a <clears throat> roller coaster of a ride. She might want to come with me to an Airbnb with a hot tub and do some of her famous cooking, show me some of her dishes. That might cheer her up. She can tell me all about Bam. Um, on YouTube for the past year and particularly I would say for the past five or four months so um, you know there's a lot of mixed emotions in me and uh, I've been emotional and uh, some people have you know asked me a question you know did I like Bam? Um, yes you did you know do i care how she felt about me in the end and, and i really don't i don't care how she felt about me in the end i think she was in decline in you know in the last few months in every way um i don't think she was at her optimum optimum health either emotionally psychologically mentally physically um and I think that she took whatever was going on inside of her, I think she took it out on other people. So I really didn't like that side of her. I didn't like her in the end. So I really don't so care. So wait, wait, how that's interesting. She said in the last few months, I mean, I've only heard of her in the last year since I started following Alan and it only picked up for me, I suppose. Like when you think about it, like when did she do that stream where she was talking about me? Um, it was when Alan was doing the AD, 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 AD. It was around then, wasn't it? So. Like it only for me picked, I only like, you know, poked my head around the corner and heard us, you know, poked my head around the door on that day, sort of, I suppose, six, nine, eight, seven months ago, yeah? So, like, maybe she was feeling effects of of whatever. Um, but from what I understand, listening to other people and listening to the clips and everything they said, she was like that the whole time for five years. <laughs> but uh, Simcast is saying she was worse towards the end, maybe. Thought about me in the end. Um, doesn't matter now. Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> I liked the, the version of her that I met or that I was introduced to, that I got to know initially. That version of her was nice. Yeah. But she turned into, you know, she really, really, as far as I'm concerned, and I maintain that in the last few months, she got really short tempered with people she got more extreme in her behavior. Um, she was talking pure fantasy about certain things. AD's gonna get compensation. And she would say things as if they were fact because she wanted to believe them. You know, Emma Kenny is, is trying to take my content. She said to me once that JC and, and Salty were trying to take my content. And basically the Claire Morgan thing was her thing and she didn't want anyone else talking about it. Yeah, but that would have been a while. Actually, I that had... would have, now that would have been a while ago, though, wouldn't it? Are you saying like her brain was addled from a long time ago? Realize at the time. Sometimes you have to listen back to voicemails to, to uh, get, you know, because there's so many voicemails to go through that I just don't remember everything on every voicemail unless I listen back. Um, so she's been listening to all the old voicemails, and there's a lot of them. Good because you get information. You know, you can present facts on your channel and stuff. People are interested in stuff like that. The true story of what was being said and stuff. Yeah. Difficult if you feel personally affected by her death and you're going through a grieving process. So deal like grief is difficult. If Simcast is watching, I've got a video on Mental Health Monday. So it's difficult to find Mental Health Monday because there's loads of videos called Mental Health Monday on the internet. But go to Super Chuffer. No, I'll just shrink my face. Go to Super Chuffer and then scroll down and there's Super Chuffer channels there. It's this one with the sad face, look, Mental Health Monday. And then on here, there's videos. And there's one specifically about grief. It was one of my first ones that I did down here with a little picture of a sad monkey. Um, and it is a 40-minute video my husband died. about grief. And actually, anyone who's in chat now who's feeling sad about Mother's Day and stuff like that, I'll, I'll pop this in um, in chat. It's not like my best media production because it's one of my earlier streams. But it does talk about all the different aspects, the Kubler-Ross uh, not necessarily cycle, but different aspects of grief, how to cope, you know, stuff like that. It's a good, comprehensive prepper on grief. Um, and it doesn't give you a big hug or anything. Maybe I should do more of that in the video, but it doesn't give you a big hug. But what it does do is it like goes through all of the stuff 
you know, the sort of grief 101, what you need to know, how it goes on, what happens. There's this Kubler-Ross grief cycle that people know about, but there's some other stuff that people don't. Um, and I talk it all through with some interesting stuff off the internet. So treatment of grief, everything. So uh, that's a good video to watch and it might help you to think about stuff that's going on. Um, so there you go. I noticed that some people have left comments and I haven't even replied to them because I don't log on to this channel, but um, yeah, Mental Health Monday video about grief. You know, she called her subs losers for listening to Salty and JC going into their chat. Um, I remember somebody coming into her live stream. This is when I'd left her channel, but I would still listen periodically just to see, you know, you know what she was going on about this time. And all this person was saying was just correcting her on something. And she got short tempered with them and, 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 you know, got them out of her channel immediately. I, I, you know, her behavior was just very erratic. She was aggressive. Um, she was short tempered. She was and so what, Simcast is basically saying is that more recently she was like that because she was suffering behind the scenes and it might have been literally affecting her, you know, physically, mentally or emotionally, mentally. Um, I guess the counterpoint to this would be to say she's always been like that, but Simcast is suggesting she got worse. I don't know at what point I learned of her and was introduced to her personality, so I can't judge whether she got worse or better or anything, but like, you know. That's Simcast's opinion there, so. Temperamental, and obviously we all know about her ranting. You know, she wasn't a nice person um, by the time that I'd stopped being friends with her. And I'm realizing now that it's, February was when I got the email from her, her last email. And uh, and the February was the last email, last February was the last email that I sent her. And I haven't really spoken to her directly for about a year until she made that community post about me, which I've print screened. And everything happened in perfect timing. I mean, she made that community post going after me because I'd said something, you know, I was allowed to give my opinion on a podcast and she didn't like that. She should, it, it, you know, if she wanted nothing to do with me, she shouldn't have continued to listen to me afterwards. And she shouldn't have tried to engage with me in any, any way. But that's how she was. Um, short temper. This is what we call bargaining. It's often bargaining is when you... Um, like bargaining's complex, like grief is complex, but like bargaining could be, if I'd done this, then maybe they wouldn't have died. Or if only I'd said this, then maybe we'd have had more time. Or if only, you know, if onlys. But here I think Simcast is trying to work through a sort of unfinished conversation with, with Bam Bam. Um, I feel like she's grieving, you know, I feel like she, you know, if, if, I, if she, and if we could have, like, I feel like she's trying to process a lot here. And maybe listening to the, the voicemails is what she needs. You know, when you're grieving, often uh, someone else telling you what you should and shouldn't do is probably not. You, know, you need to listen to your heart a bit, but you also need to be able to take a step back and look things from the outside and say, is this really helpful to me? You know, 10 minutes of this, then a half hour dog walk, or, you know, 20 minutes of this, looking into the, the sadness and the void. But now I need to try, try and change my, just my mind, distract myself. And I mean, for a lot of you in chat that have been dealing with stuff uh, like, Mother's Day might be a reminder, but if you spend your whole day sort of, you know, staring into the, the sadness and thinking about all the past and all that, like, it's not, I'm not saying you don't have that, but it's about balance. So what is good when you're dealing with things like this, uh, mental health wise, is to say, I, I, I'm feeling these things, they're real. Of course, I'm going to feel them. So I'm going to allow myself to feel them, but I'm going to put a little bit of a timer on and I'm not going to want to do this the whole day if I can. So I'm going to sort of mentally say to myself, I'm allowed it, but like 10 minutes of this, then let's try and change our mind. And changing your mind is very difficult. Like your thoughts, feelings, and your actions, your behaviors are all linked in a triangle. So mind and thoughts is very difficult. Feelings go with that. So I might need to change my actions and my behaviors. So I don't know, you might get out the old photo album and have a look, you might even have a cry. And then you might close the photo album and go out into a different room, go to a, you know, put on a film, play a piano, go for a dog. I always like going for a dog walk personally because it physically clears 
like you know the, the air that I have to look around and before you know it you're not fully concentrating on the thing that made you sad or makes you sad or is something that you can deal with again in the future and get out and unpack and put away a bit you know sometimes and process but you don't have to carry it all as a constant burden sometimes you can just be a human being in the moment instead and that moment doesn't have to be reflecting on the past so you're allowed that too and you shouldn't beat yourself up about that at all so um the the process of grief involves that like going away and coming back to the the difficult thing um and sometimes with distance and time it becomes easier sometimes it's not sometimes uh something might trigger it and like you know when something triggers grief you sh it's not like i'm not saying right that's triggered your grief right immediately start distracting yourself go for a walk now stop it stop it i'm not saying that i'm saying you're allowed it you're allowed like you should feel it these are natural human emotions but the problem that we have as humans especially you know flawed humans that we are is that it sort of overwhelms us and then we can't climb out of it so it's like you're allowed to jump in the pool but you also need to make sure you've prepared the steps and the little you know way to get out the pool before you jump in because it's going to be difficult you're going to be swimming in the grief but you've said to yourself this time is going to go off and i'm going to go and walk the dog and i'm going to cook the dinner and i'm going to do these things that are like mechanical physical actions that i have to sort of force myself to do but in the process it stop you know it changes the way you're thinking therefore the way you're feeling about certain things and you can get you know you can you can deal with things because you're human you can deal with things so um yeah it's about that sort of process you know in some ways yeah i think i've made a good analogy there anyway so i worry about simcast a little bit because i feel like she's definitely feeling grief here um and she's sort of explaining it as she's talking so um another thing that i would say is i'm probably not the best person for this because like who the fuck am i but if she ever wanted to talk to me not on a stream she can reach out to me in discord or in a comment or something and i can send her an email and a you know I'm not going to have, she doesn't have to give her my phone number. No, she doesn't have to have my phone number or I don't have to have hers. You know what I mean? But we could talk on a Discord call or something if she wanted. Um, I know it's a random thing to offer, but I feel like if someone's feeling grief and like like this, then um, talking to people helps. That's the same for you, Chuffers. Talk to each other in Discord. <laughs> I can't talk to all of you at once. I'm talking to all of you at once now, aren't I? So, um, but Simcast is not here right now. So, uh, she has done the right thing by talking to her mom and you know and stuff like that i'm sure there's other people that she can talk to as well i think she knows that so i think she'll be okay um and it seems like she is processing this so I'd always had a problem with somebody um if she didn't like your opinion she'd go after you it, you know she just i'm wondering now and and this is what i i actually meant to say i'm wondering now did bam know all this time she was doing her live streams and going on night after night for hours and hours and hours. Did she know that she was about to depart? Did she know that she was about to go home or that she was going home very soon? Did she? So right, here's a question then, because I felt that in the background she was opening jars and she was doing narcotics and people said she had an opium addiction. And I felt that it sounded like she was sniffing coke. Um, definitely she was smoking and I, I also felt like I don't know what was going on in life but it sat like she, the way she was talking and the way there were people around the house it felt like there was someone there that she was caring for and I thought she was caring for someone else that was elderly that was going through some stuff but maybe you know that was part of her own issues um, I'm never going to know myself but uh, I do wonder whether it, like there was a sense of like having given up and being like heavily medicated about stuff on the other hand uh, I would also say if you did know that like, why would you want not want to enjoy? Like, it's the joy that you want to take from life. Like, what, maybe she took joy in in pain in this way, but like, it would seem like a real wasted effort, wouldn't it, to spend night after night screaming obscenities into the internet? You know, um, that's what I would like to. Uh, you know, sometimes I wonder with some of the things that she said to me. Did she know that? Uh, you know, See, I wonder, did she know this is grief, this is bargaining? You're right, Beth, I'm sure she'll get over it, but uh, it's a funny one because in this particular situation, there aren't going to be that many people stepping forward to offer her um, solace in her grief. Like, Obviously, Val's not going to be like, well, you know, come and cry on my shoulder. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, It's still a strange thing. Like, it's, I'll tell you what's really interesting to me. I'm new to their 
group, so to speak. I know I'm not in, in their group, but I'm able to see these group dynamics and human behaviors. And what's interesting to me is this is a, a conflict group, two groups in conflict, and someone very strong on the one side, so to speak, is now died, and it's a tragedy. Uh, whichever way you want to cut it, someone dying is a tragedy for their family, for them, you know, for their side, whatever. Um, and it's interesting to see, you know, the human dynamics of how people are dealing with it in internet videos, talking about it online. You know, it's talking about human feelings, human behaviours, human emotions, talking about it all on the internet. For one thing, I think it's really healthy in a way. Like, I think there's a really, like, ho hopefully what I'm doing here and like what we're doing, like there's something positive socially and healthy about saying we're talking about mental health, we're talking about grief. We're, even Bam and what she was doing is associated with her own mental health, her own sense of, you know, even whether she's psychotic or not is a mental health issue. Like we're talking about these things in a more mature and grown up, uh, interesting way than just shutting these conversations down and saying, oh, just get on with it or whatever. So I think, you know, this is actually quite interesting as a sort of after effect of Bam's death, whatever it is that's happening. Out of time. That's what I wonder, because I had a teacher like that. I had a teacher that didn't like me. I once did very did something very stupid. I left my bag on the stairs when I was about 11, when I was going to school. It was a wide, wide staircase, really wide. And this particular teacher who didn't like me, who always was picking on me, took the bag up, put it in the staff room and wouldn't give me my bag back until the end of, you know, until the end of school and um end of the school day and she was you know in the staff room looking at me and laughing I and mean, she really didn't like me and she liked to she liked to pick at me and about six months after that i found out that she wasn't very well came to school saw her in a wheelchair and that was basically the end of her i remember um i remember standing in front of her and looking simcast has magic power god protects her so when someone fucks with her they die this happened to me once i've got magic power god protects me <laughs> Sound like another, I tell these stories, it's funny. Um, once when I was quite young, I was only like 18 or 19, I bought this like bit of weed off this guy and I was supposed to sell some of it and make some money and pay for it. You know, like, you know, you smoke your bit and then you sell like a few eighths and then you can pay for the bit that you, and like the weed was awful though and I couldn't like sell it and it was all moldy and bad. And I was like, I don't want to pay for it, it's rubbish. <laughs> so we had this problem didn't we? And this guy got another guy who was bigger to come and like scare me up at college. And I was I had my little car, my little Rover Metro. And I was like, I'm not getting out of the fucking car. <laughs> you can fuck off. I'll drive off. I'm not going to fucking get out of the car and fight you. You're massive. Like, he's like some grown bloke, like this grown nutter bloke. And like, I poked the money out the window that I owed. And I was like, you know, I've had the weed. I don't like it, but I'll give you the money that I owe you. But I'm not getting out to have a fight or anything. So I, I threw all the money out the window as well. So it all went in the air like fluttering around and then I just reversed out and drove off and I did I did worry like there's this big scary man like you know he's come to threaten me over this st it was stupid petty it was petty but over this petty bit of drug like weed argument and then a couple of weeks later that big scary man died in a car accident and I thought well there you go don't fuck with Scotty Hottis <laughs> don't fuck with Scotty Hottis I put the hex on you <laughs> But she's put the hex on that teacher and she died. And then she put the hex on Bim Bin because she doesn't like Bam because she fell out with her and then she died. So you don't want to fall out with Simcast. I'm Personally, I'm quite a fan. Down at her and she wouldn't make eye contact with me, this teacher. So, um, and she was always short tempered before she departed. Um, so I do wonder if, if Bam knew that she was going to leave us. And that's why she was the way she was. And that's why she escalated and deteriorated in the last few months. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> one thing I did find out is that she wasn't the age that she claimed she was. She was a few years older than what she said she was. And somebody who preached honesty and told me that she ran her channel on truth and, you know, claimed not to dislike, not to like dishonest people and, you know, claimed that various people didn't tell the truth, including the Rusex. Um, you know, for somebody who said that she ran her channel on truth, well, it turns out she was older than she claimed she was. If the dates on her memorial site are correct, I, 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 I would rather call it a celebration of life site than what it's called.
you know, she shaved a few years off of her age. I did think she was older than what she claimed because she def- definitely looked older. But, uh, you know, she wasn't She wasn't the beat. I think some people would rather call it an I'm glad you're dead site, but I think we'll put the balance in the middle and just put it in memorial. Speaking of honesty, like she preached, was she? Oh. I'm going to admit that... We had a change. I don't... Look, that was part one of the podcast. We had a change of picture. Now, Simcast will agree with me now. She will agree with me now on this. I don't know how she's doing this, but she would agree with me now. Could have gone for a more appropriate picture choice for this particular video. Will she be attending the funeral? I can't be all going to say this. Why doesn't... (laughs) Why don't you get yourself dressed up in a nice nice black outfit and have a new photo taken. I'll come round and take the photos if you want. I've got a nice camera. Got a nice camera. We can do a photo shoot for your new pictures. You can do one of your nice dinners. Brown bikini, hot tub, Nicole Kessinger, we're away. There's you go. You see someone's posted the Nicole Kessinger in the in the chat before I could say it. <laughs> how did that picture of me and all the ladies get as a meme? I mean, how did you get that? Is, did I put that on? I need to get one of my head doing this. Anyway, look. I'm going to find this part of the podcast uh, a bit challenging to record because I am going through so many different emotions. I can feel it. Um, I mean, we've got the grief over Bam, we've got the anger, we've got the unresolved issues, we've got the was she, did she, how could she, we've got the fried chicken, which is quite a yum yum. (laughs) I wonder if they serve fried chicken at the buffet at at the funeral. I went to a funeral, right, a family funeral a little while ago, and like the buffet they had was absolutely phenomenal. I've never seen a buffet like it. Obviously vegan, so I didn't eat all the stuff, but like these days it's not sausage rolls anymore. I mean, they, the lady that had, you know, her funeral, she was a classy lady, I'll tell you that. She was a classy lady. And I think it was quite right that she had a phenomenal buffet. Phenomenal. It looked like Michelin starred little cakes and all sorts, like, phenomenal. Sorry, get back to this. A few secrets, and she actually did tell me on quite a few occasions that she didn't feel well. And she said she'd bounce back, but I wish I had known more at the time. Maybe she did know. I wish I had known more at the time, but I just thought she had the flu or something. And it was more than that. Um, She also told me, um, you know, about her marriage and how it wasn't all that great and how she had... I'm not going to like pick every point apart when she says about this, but I'm going to just mark it here and then, you know, you know that I've said it, is I feel very strongly Simcast is trying to put across that Bam knew she was poorly before she told anyone and that her behaviour is in some way to be um, excused by her own struggle with whatever she was going through. I don't think it does excuse her behavior, and I don't know if she knew or anything like that, but uh, it's an interesting concept, but I'm not I'm not buying that it's like, you know, in fact, it makes it worse in some ways. <laughs> you think she'd be able to just fucking let it go and like, you know, spread some joy, do some good. So I'm not having it, but yeah. To do a lot of cooking, um, and there was a, there is a, there is a recording of her telling me, you know, when Bam got an idea, when an idea came into her head, she would become completely fixated with it or obsessed. Um, she wanted me to do a video, and she's telling me, get that video up straight away, get it up fast. And she goes through a list of tags that she wants me to put under this particular video that she wants me to put up. Um, I never ever did that video that she Good. wanted me to to put up, and sometimes I wonder if she started to realize that I wasn't going to be one of her, I don't know. I think Bam saw people as people that she could use. I don't think she, I think- That's a repeating theme, narcissism, 
people that are just uh, fuel for the narcissist or objects that they can use, often they think in, what's the word, like, monetary is not the right word but tradable like you're there's a word for it steve was talking about it in the podcast ah oh, like you know you trade people like their value to you is like about yeah stuff like that anyway she saw everybody um as an extension of herself rather than people as individuals she didn't see people as in as individuals she saw people as how can she use them to benefit herself that's how she saw. I see you in chat talking about smoking. I'm smoking. I need to stop this. Yeah. How she could use them to prop herself up. Um, you know, she's she's telling me to do this video. Get it up right now. Get it up fast. Put tags on it. And uh, she doesn't seem to realise that I'm not someone you can tell what to do. Also, she didn't seem to care that I had no interest in the subject that uh, this video was supposed to be about and it, 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 it was about somebody and it was you know she wanted me to make parallels or comparisons to Martin Behan with this video oh and she was just you know get the video up fast I don't think she realized who she was talking to I'm not somebody that you can tell what to do uh, I'm just not that I'm just not that way inclined I, get, I, and I've got I don't feeling, think yeah. she cared that I had no interest in the in the in the person that she wanted me to do a video about I had no interest in doing it. You know, she, uh, and I've said this, Bam liked people, or rather, I don't think she liked anyone, but I would say she rather preferred people she could control and influence. Manipulate is the key word. So that ruled me out. She wanted loyalty. I'll tell you what, one of the things that struck me real hard was there's like a little... Um, What am I trying to say? Like when I first went into her chat and she was talking about me, yeah? Like by calling her out directly and by disarming anything that she said by saying, no, absolutely, I'll cook. Like, at first of all, I was like, you're right, you're okay, I'll come on the stream then and I'll just talk to her, you know? And then, like, <sighs> like by not being easy to manipulate or push around, um, yeah, I think it enraged her. You know, it's like a narcissist does. They recognise people who are vulnerable to their stuff and they also recognise people, or and it infuriates them, who call them out, see them for what they are and just don't give a shit and aren't scared. And I, that infuriates them even more because it's like they haven't got any power at all. So yeah, I, I felt that as well, yeah. Complete devotion and someone she could use. I was no longer useful to her for these reasons because I'm opinionated, because I'm independent-minded. Um, because I'm not somebody that she could control. And I realise now that she was watching my interactions with others. Um, you know, she she read everything. She 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 read comments. You know, she would pretend that she wasn't reading comments and pretending that she wasn't watching your content, but she was. She was reading comments and she was watching you all the time and she was watching me all the time. And she was watching my interactions with EK. I For some reason, like... I never saw the live streams or heard the live streams that she did about EK um, or me, EK? For, as a matter of fact. I, kn I knew nothing about those. I don't know how I missed those. I would periodically, um, even when I left the channel, after I left the channel, like I said, I would period periodically listen just to see if she changed or, you know, what she was talking about this time. But I never heard the live streams that she did about EK. Um EK and I got along. Why does everyone have fucking code names in the Krama world? Who's EK? Kessinger? Ruth, it's not Ruth. E, who's EK? Very well. We were um, very similar minded and we had differing opinions to her, to Bam, and I don't think she liked that. I also gave E.T. Eight, not E.T. E.T. I also gave E.K. quite a lot of attention and I would pin her comments. Bam would come to my channel and she would write something about Claire Morgan and you know what her language is like and it would be like... Um, Who's Emma Kenny? This is Emma Kenny was stealing her stuff.
Wait, watch Anna, Emma Kenny be like a quite popular true crime channel with quite reasonable, normal looking true crime content and a repeatable theme talking about all different cases, getting between like 50 and 100,000 subscribers. Like 200,000 subscribers. When Anna Sharp unexpectedly. I think I've I think I've witnessed this channel before somewhere. I think I might have looked at it before. I don't think so though. But two hundred thousand subscribers and look exactly what I said. It's a true crime channel. Sharon Wilkinson sent tippies. Loving the look, Scott. Thank you. Super chuffer owes five hugs. I get tippies for having my, done my own haircut, so that's quite a benefit because when you cut other people's hair, then they pay you. But when I cut my own hair, no one pays me, and I have to do the work as well. So actually, if anything, I deserve more tippies than, but I can't pay them, so thank you. Here's a button. Follow me. Feel this we came to take win. Follow ladies. Uh -huh. I want ladies. Uh -huh. Super ladies. Uh -huh. Let go and feel this we came to take win. So yeah, look, she's getting 50 to 100,000 views a video. She's a constant true crimer. She's doing exactly, yeah, I see what she's doing, like, you know. Constant true crimer. There's Albert Fish, the boogeyman. <laughs> so what she's done there is she's watched uh, a video made by, um, uh, what's his name? Shrouded Hand. Shrouded Hand did a real comprehensive video about that. And then she's waited a few months before she's then done the same video herself in her way on her channel. So uh, quite happy to just do whatever content everyone else has done. Constant true crimer. Um, doesn't look like the sort of thing I'd like to watch. I'm not interested in constant horror told to me by that lady. Um, but yeah, she's doing her thing on YouTube and she's getting her money, running her show, getting a patron. Uh, like it doesn't appeal to me, but I can see why Bin Bin's really sort of angry and jealous about it. A lot of these crime channels like kind of feel like they would look, they feel like they are this and they're not, you know? Like the way you get to do this is the way that, um, uh, what's the name? Cheesy True Crime and also Laura Crime Analyst do, which is just to not talk to anybody that doesn't further you. Like they don't get into, I, I guarantee this, this woman doesn't get into any back and forth on the internet with who said what about anybody or any shit like that. I guarantee she's just out there ravaging for content, getting the scripts. She's probably got someone helping to write the scripts these days with these numbers, like, and this consistency of upload. Like, you know, get the scripts together, bang them out, get the scripts together, bang them out. Does she edit it herself even? Like, you don't have to. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I, I would think at this level, you should probably start farming out the editing as well, because then you can just start banging them out every three days like she does. Um, and there's enough horror in the world to be able to talk about something horrific every three days, yeah? So, that's who that is. Five words and it would be colourful language, whereas EK would come to my channel and she would write a constructive sentence with paragraphs. And even though sometimes her comments were very long, I thought um, her input, her comments were well executed and well um, articulated, you know, her opinions. And um, so I would pin a lot of EK's comments and I don't think Bam mm. like, like the fact that I would pin EK's comments over hers. And I think that was the start of her dislike of, of EK. That's my personal opinion. I don't know. I, uh, like and, personally, I just take an instant dislike to that sort of stuff because I see it like quite a lot of people do as a sort of um, tragedy porn, like sort of style of content creation. Like, you know, the thumbnails, the, the presentation of it, the sort of repeated banging of the set, like banging out a similar video every three days like that like I, yeah I, I like it just feels like there's some soulless i haven't even watched us talking i'm just judging it on the way it's presented to me on you know like that um it just seems like there's some well anyway yeah. and, uh you know she would try and tell people what to do with their channels as far as i know ek told me that bam tried to get her to take down a tribute video she'd done of shenan um and you know she was a she was a very controlling um person but if you have i think so i take it back maybe emma kenny does go into people's comments and talk about what other people said is allowed to say the type of relationship they had with bam one-on-one -on -one, talking to bam one-on-one -on -one was very very different to listening to her long live streams um one-on-one -on -one, she was kind she was funny she was a good listener she was revealing. She told you a lot about herself. Um, now I know what she was doing behind the scenes. I'm glad that I actually never phoned her 
all our correspondences offline were done by email or voicemail, all of them. None was done by phone. But I have a voicemail of her saying to me, uh, you should know, she, she wanted me to ring her. She was always wanting me to ring her. Now I know what she was doing with recordings. I'm glad that I never rang her, but she would tell me that she wanted me to ring her. She would say, you know, you should ring me. And She's a psychologist and TV presenter. She doesn't present like that on a YouTube channel, look. It looks like she's one of these, like, sitting in a room talking about another horrible case every other day. Gore porn YouTuber. That's what it looks like to me. I'm, I'm not misjudging that. That's what it looks like to me. Like, she might well be a, a psychologist, but the way she's presented her channel and her content here, like, the thumbnails are always of pictures of people who have died, and it's just her sitting in a room talking about it, and there's loads of it, and it's every other day, and the thumbnail title, the titles are things like Unheard Screams, A Stolen Innocence, The Icebot Killer, The Silent Predator, Killed and Eaten, Burnt Alive, like, <laughs> hello? If she's a psychologist, she knows psychology, psychologically what she's doing there and it's putting me off. So that's my feelings. I never did. I also never used an email that had my full name. I've got two emails. I've got one with my full name and I've got one with um, my business name and my first name and that's it, but not my full name. I never completely trusted her for some strange reason. Um, after a while, the stuff that she was saying about, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to her without her saying something about, it seems like she was always bringing up the qualifications and education that she had. That was very, very uh, tiring. That got very tedious listening to that. Um, I don't care about what qualifications people have. That's never a factor when it comes to me being friends with somebody. Uh, I've been speaking to Kay's way a little bit, a wee bit. Um, by email, I trust Kay's way. Um, and until she proves that I can't trust her, I will trust her. I trust her. I think she's a good person. And I think her first video about BAM was absolutely spot on. Kay's way is not egotistical. She's not interested in being, you know, BAM wanted attention, credit, complete devotion. She was all ultimately about herself. You know, there is a talk of, of BAM raising money for Kay's Way and raising money for people and helping people with their animals. And I see what you're saying there. Emma Kenny's qualified to talk about true crime. I guess, I don't know, like, what qualification you need to talk about true crime other than, I suppose, criminology, forensic psychology, maybe. Um, but I think talking about it is an open forum. But I see that they're jealous of someone who has some sort of credential and success on YouTube who doesn't demean their channel by talking all these bollocks about all this shit, who is just hard hammering the algorithm uh, for clicks and views. And like, it's kind of clickbaity. Like, she knows what she's doing. Um, I find I see it as being quite tacky when you're dealing with death and murder and stuff like that. Uh, I'm allowed to have my feelings. Everyone's allowed to have theirs, I guess. But I can see why you're saying that these people are angry about her. I think she's just like a fringe character in terms of the Bam Bam. Like you know, the, she's not. What you can see on her channel is she's not involved herself in all of that by making videos about what Bam said, about this said or that said. She's just done every three days another video about another murder, about another video about another murder. Let me just pick a random one. One night in March 1995, a US teenager walked a short distance home from her boyfriend's house. It was a journey that she'd never complete. I mean, she might have the... Um, it's an hour long. Like, I don't understand how she's got the time to write all these scripts at this length but she might be a decent script writer and stuff like that you know she's definitely doing this um uh emotional like you know i do this a bit myself in content when i'm dealing with this sort of stuff as well so like but it feels the present i don't do you know what i mean like oh anyway the like. body was found the next day a short distance from her home over a quarter of a century later her brutal murder remains unsolved this is the story of a horrific crime that not only took a young girl's life full of promise yeah what we're doing is we're sensationalizing and horrifying and like that's exactly the thing that i said it was so um like it's just a slight tone to it that i don't quite vibe with myself and uh, all this stuff all these thumbnails like this and these 
Like we've what we've done now is what's happened now, right? The latest stuff you can see is because YouTube now picks up on things like um, in the previous. Yeah, we just disconnected and reconnected. We should still be running. Are we still running? We're back. You're saying we're back, okay. Um, I was just basically saying, it's a bit like the sun, uh, whereas in the past she wasn't able to put these comments. Uh, in the past she put things like in the actual title, um, stabbed and reservoir dogs murder and all this like the sun now she can't because youtube demonetizes it so she started putting it in the thumbnail instead tortured for months monster parents horror tale like it's making true crime into a more sensationalist horrifying thing like you know sensationalizing and horrifying it up to make it a bit more uh tabloidy um and it's not for me so like the cr true crime content you know facts about true crimes i do have interest in but the way she presents it and the way she stylizes it, stylizes it, is not for me. And that's just a personal choice. When Anna choice. Sharp unexpectedly you know, became pregnant with her second child, there should got, have been a time of elation. Everyone's got different feelings. I haven't even got digging into her videos because of this, but everyone's got different feelings on the way they like to watch stuff and the people that they vibe with. So I, I think everyone's allowed to have that. So I'm not giving, you know, today's not an ex, Scott's decided to have a pop at Anna Kent. It's just, you should, her name came up, I looked at the channel and that's how I feel about it. So I'm just going to move on. And all that. And um, I personally know because I, the conversations that we have, yes, she did help people, but she would often resent helping somebody in the end, especially if that person took attention away from her. Bam was all ultimately about herself and, uh, you know, getting attention, getting credit. She wanted credit for contacting the press over the paywall photos. She constantly wanted acknowledgement. You could not, her ego was never fed, never. And so that was one of the reasons why I decided not to be involved with her channel after a certain time. Um, and you know, I've got mixed emotions. Part of me, you know, I, I want to say, you know, to her family and to her daughter. She loved her kids. She loved her family. She proudly sent me photographs of her family. She proudly sent me photographs of her dog, Fluky. Um, you know, she was, I think she was probably a good mother. She loved her family. She was looking forward to seeing her daughter get married. She was very excited about that. Um, I have mixed emotions about, about her. You know, on one hand, I feel, you know, compassion, particularly for her family. And on the other hand, there is some kind of, you know, at least, you know, at least her reign is over in terms of how she would go at people. Um, and people have dif different experiences with her. Some people have wonderful, mem you know, exp experiences with her, wonderful memories of her. And they're allowed to share their wonderful experiences with her and how they're going to, um, and how she helped them. That's absolutely fine. But not everyone ha will have the same experience. And you have to understand that everyone has a different experience with her. Um, I didn't like how she became fixated with the Rusex. I didn't like how she talked about Shanann. Um, I didn't like how she behaved in, in, in the end. She's not somebody that I wanted to, I would have wanted to, um, kept in communication with. Now, I will, I will admit that I did email her to confirm, to get confirmation of, of the, of the breaking news. Um, you know, it's the only, you know, recently I did email to see, you know, is this, you know, ask, is this true? Um, and of course there was no reply because. <coughs> wait, you eat, wait. <coughs> God, that pipe is better than <coughs> strong in it. Fuck. <laughs> I fucked myself up smoking from the vaporizer now. Oh, yeah. I just thought it's nearly finished, so I just took a big one of it and took it back. And I was like, whoa. Um, you said, Simcast just said, right? Simcast just said that she she just sent to confirm whether being, whether Bam had died, she, <laughs> she sent her an email and 
<coughs> Presumably it said like, hi, have you died? <coughs> like why? <laughs> Sending emails to dead people. Hi, sorry to bother you. Just wanted to confirm that you died. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. If I think someone's died or if I've heard they've died, I'm going to send them an email. I'm going to shoot them an email. Just a quick one. Oh, are you dead? Do you, have to reply, do you have to write anything else? There's no point in writing out a big thing. And then at the end, also, like, there's no point in like, sorry, nice to see you, doing this. I just wanted to tell you about this, this and that. You know. And then, by the way, are oh, you dead? You don't put it at the bottom because otherwise you've wasted all that email, yeah? <laughs> And like if they don't reply, you, you consider them dead. <laughs> it's a simple system. They would reply, It's a serious thing, so they'll reply if they're not dead. Just bizarre. I <laughs> thought to get confirmation, I'm just going to send her an email. You know, she can't reply. Um, but, you know, I didn't want to have an, any intimacy with her after, uh, after a certain time. I knew that something was going on with her and I knew she was turning. Turning, and, um, turning. Did you become a zombies? <laughs> too soon, too soon. When I did the joke with the Ouija board, too soon, too soon. Um, did she become a zombies? <laughs> She's turning. <laughs> you have to chop her head off then, don't you, or some shit? What do you do? I can't remember what you have to do. <laughs> <coughs> Which film is this? Is this The Walking Dead or is this... Right. Oh, God. But, you know, people who have had people who love her and have had good experiences with her, they're allowed to share that. You know, not everyone's experience with Bam will be the same experience. Um, my experience with her is it started out great and then she turned. It started with a kiss. I never thought it would come to this. I started with a kiss. <laughs> Doing full Adam Partridge now. Then she turned again. She turned. Oh my god! <laughs> no wonder she was so fucking vile on the internet. She was a zombie. <laughs> and you know, I'm allowed to to share that with people, and people are allowed to share the good experiences they had with her. Um, you know, everyone's experience will be different. Oh, we've got to change. Wait, wait, wait. We've got to change. Podcast simcast. <laughs> This is the wrong way around, the two words. But it shakes things up. Podcast Simcast now, yeah. Human behaviour, true karma. She's written karma! Ah! They know it, they write it. Karma, true karma, reaction videos, commentary, food and life, current events, gossip. I think that covers it all. <laughs> Which of these... Which of these in this list is the odd one out? Anyone? Which of these in this list is the odd one out that maybe shouldn't go in the list? Which of these is the tomato in the fruit salad? You know, which which of these is the thing that maybe we could just... Which of these doesn't go in the list? Anyone in chat? Anyone? Are you watching? <laughs> Food, yes. Jessica Cress is right on it. She knows what's happening. <laughs> She's got a brain in her head. Unlike all you other fucking numptis. Are you on the change, all of you? <laughs> she spelled behaviour wrong. Ah, we'll let her off. Maybe it's the American spelling. <laughs> I didn't even spot it, because it was all in capital letters. It struck me as being very serious. Food and life, that's what it is. Get rid of food and life. Have that on its own separate channel, and then all of this makes sense. I can't believe I'm like Scotty's true crime consultancy. I need to go around all the true crime channels and give them a consultancy. Emma Kenny, stop looking like the sun. <laughs> Take things, you know, try and have a little bit more, um, I guess, I don't know, let, leave me alone actually. Just leave me alone on Emma Kenny. This one, we'll start with Simcast. <laughs> I don't want to start on Emma Kenny in case all the Emma Kenny fans start on me, you know. You know I don't want to pick a fight with fucking some other true crime nutter, do I? I don't know anything about what she's like, but she's getting a view. She's doing a show. I, it is what it is. If you like that sort of thing, then maybe you like that sort of thing. But I don't really. 
I mean, it has become quite popular on the internet in, as a general thing, but the way it's done on certain channels, doesn't matter whether they've got success or a bit of gloss, like the way it's done in terms of this constant, for me, it's the constant pumping out of horror, of like, today's Tuesday, so forget that horrible murder I was talking about yesterday, here's another fucking horrible murder of a child. Right, I'm glad I've made my money. I'm off on holiday. Like, you know, it's it's that sort of vibe that I just think, fucking, I don't vibe with it. I, I do not vibe with it. I'll leave that well alone now, forever. Who are you talking about? Leave Emma alone. You all like Emma, fair enough. I don't. Look. Who is she? Who is she? Who's who? I did say that one-on-one -on -one she... Snippies is building a garden bed. It's night time. It's night time. And also, it's not Mother's Day in America. You have different days. But in the UK, it's Mother's Day. But we don't really do a big thing at my family. But other people do. I don't know. But, like, she's on at seven. Don't, don't promote. Look, I've accidentally promoted her now. Don't watch her. Don't watch her. I'll tell you what it's going to be like. Oh, shocking horror. A, ch a poor child had her fucking teeth bashed in. You won't believe the shocking horror of the poor child that's had their fucking teeth bashed in when I tell you all about what a fucking horror show it was. And the police and the true crime join me again for another really, and like with sound effects going, dawn, cracker, cracker. And like, you know, like, come on, come on. It's a crossover between horror movies and the truth and, and real factual, evidential, dry facts. And there's different ways to dress up dry facts, but that way is a little bit tactless. She was a, a very, you know, different person. Much it's not nicer. what Emma's done. I don't care who Emma is. I don't know anything, anything about her personality or anything. I'm judging the media. Um, like what it, the way it looked to me, the way it was presented, the first 10 seconds of her talking on a random video. I just, everything repelled me. <laughs> It's like two ends of a magnet. Certain films and video and whatever, they make me go, oh, this is interesting. I'll have a watch of this. And other things make me go, oh, uh, I don't like the way you've done that. Like, but even in our private conversations... We've all got different things really that we like. It's fine. We go on and on about how she was educated and about her qualifications and her education. And Sorry to hear that, Snips. I hope you enjoyed building the garden beds. It got so monotonous. Um, and I, Do you mean you're lugging around wood? <laughs> you know, that's never a reason why I would become friends with somebody. I don't care about. Do someone. they have to be alligator proof? Wait, <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting distracted. Academic. Intent. Surely you'd want to make sure that like an alligator couldn't burrow into it and hide in it and jump out of the flowers because you didn't know. Intelligence or qualifications. Do they? Do they? When they do their eggs. Do they do them in the water or on the banks? I expect they do them on the banks, don't they? You could definitely get a crocodile in a flower bed then. It's never a factor. And I'll tell you a little secret. I'll tell you a secret. I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> There's a hot tub with your name on it. <laughs> Paid for by Scotty Hottie's Hot Tub Fund. One of these days, I'm going to say this, and someone's going to join me in a hot tub in an Airbnb on the internet for an exciting... Show. I keep looking around because I've lost my lighter. It's totally gone. I'm fucked. I can't do any smokies. Go on, Simcast, carry no, on. Um, all three of what my, is... well, two of my uncles, which include, and, and my, my dad, the three brothers. <laughs> Lucky with a dump truck of soil. There's, all of them are successful. FaceTime jacuzzi. Now, what I want to do is I want to hire an Airbnb have other content creators join me at the Airbnb. I'll set up the desk with the laptop, the cameras, the microphones. We can sit around the desk and do the podcast. Yeah. Like professionals. And then, as well as that, we can make other content in other spaces. Just like for a bit. Like, that's part of a cool thing that we can do. And like, the hot tub has, you know, me and Sim casting the hot tub on the... In their own right. Or, or they've had success in their own right. I'm going to call um, the show Scott and the Kessingers Live. And it's going to be me and as many Nicole Kessinger lookalikes as we can cram in a hot tub. And Angry Alan will be furious. And what I'll do is I'll say, I'll put plastic, plastic bags, I'll put paper bags on all their heads so that really, really objectify them, right? No, I'll put paper bags on their heads and I'll say one of them is actually the real Nicole Kessinger. 
The other three or four or five or six are not the real Nicole Kessinger. And if you tip, when you hit different tip goals, you can choose a bag to take off and see who's which Kessinger is which, essentially. And we will never reach the final tip goal. So one Kessinger will always remain masked. And I'll say, that's the real Kessinger. You just never got to take the bag off her head. And that can be a proper plastic bag's not paper. That can be a proper, this can be the show. It's not misogynistic if it's about Nicole Kessinger and it makes Alan angry. So um, we'll have all different Nicole Kessingers in a hot tub. And we'll do it as a live stream. Big ups, JJ Kane. Obviously, JJ Kane just joins in the stream and understands exactly what's going on. Because <laughs> I'm here saying I'm going to get loads of Nicole Kessingers in a hot tub. So nothing changes, does it? <laughs> So I'm going to get loads of Nicole Kessingers, get them in the hot tub, right? They'll all have masks on, not bags on their head because it's objectification. The brown bikini is bad enough. But what we're going to do is they'll have masks. So the masked Kessingers, that's it, like the masked singer. It's the masked Kessingers. And they all on the, they all on the, they all on the, um... <laughs> I hire an Airbnb. The masked Kessingers arrive. I can just book them. I can just book models. They arrive. We mask them up. We start the show. Hi, it's Scott. We sat around the round table with all the Kessingers and maybe Steve of the Dead and some other people. And then we ask the Kessingers questions. You ask them questions in chat. You decide who you think who is. Hopefully they're all celebrity guests. And then as the night goes on and the tips goals get raised, we take we unmask the Kessingers and you see who they are, and that's the show. And then one of them might be the real Nicole Kessinger, but if we get to the end of the stream and there's still masked Kessingers, you never find out we get to go again. Alan will be there throwing thousands of dollars at it. Unmask her! Unmask her! <laughs> Alan will be there throwing thousands of dollars. Get that mask off that Kessinger! Now there's another thousand for the bikini. Get the bikini off that Kessinger! It'll be like, we'll have one of them covered in peanuts bags. Like, you know, peanuts, when you used to buy them. I don't know if everyone knows this, but when I grew up in the UK, you used to have peanuts. And they used to come on a... They were Big D peanuts board. And they had a woman on it in the pub, like this. Right? This is what used to happen. What's going on here? I just want the picture. Images. This is what would happen... This would be in the pub, right? And it'd be up on the wall and there's bags of peanuts attached to it. And when you buy a bag of peanuts, it reveals more of the picture of the woman. And the picture that the woman's quite saucy. So you'd be encouraged to buy peanuts so that you could reveal the image of the woman. I mean, I never, I was just a kid, so I didn't think, you know, I just like the peanuts, please, but there was a picture of a woman on it and the more peanuts that would get bought, eventually there'd be like an end. And then I suppose what would happen, this is probably a bad system because what would happen is once the woman is revealed, yeah, like once she's totally revealed, all the peanuts have been bought, they put up a new board, don't they? So instead, no one would buy the last bag of peanuts. Just leave the last bag of peanuts up there, huh? Because, you know, you don't want to, take the last bag and then they change the board but the peanuts would be attached to a board with a picture of a woman on it what's that got to do with what I'm talking about I can no longer remember oh that's it Kessingers right so what I'll do is I'll have a Nicole Kessinger and she'll be covered in bags of peanuts and the last ones will be on her head so as the tips come in I'll pull off bags of peanuts you will gradually reveal the Kessinger until you get about this far up her head and then the stream ends suddenly and that's the end of the stream. And we never quite reveal the Kessinger. We never quite reveal the Kessinger. No one was, look, the board's waterproof. No one was jerking off in the pub over peanuts. It was just something, like, it's up there behind the bar and like you'd order a pint of beer, this and that, and then you'd look at the, the board with the peanuts on and you see the woman was, and you go, oh, I'll have two bags. Oh, I can see a, I can see a titty, but... Titty appearing. I'll have two bags. There you go. Revealed the breast. Thank you very much. Cheers, barkeep. And then you just go on your way. You wouldn't spend a lot of time engaged with the 
the thing. You'd be up there behind the bar. It's just you'd feel you'd done your part for the rest of the drinkers at the bar by helping to reveal the. I mean, I didn't. I was a kid, so I never got to the age of like you know buying peanuts. By the time I got to being buying rounds of drinks, the tradition or whatever you'd call it, the misogynistic uh, marketing idea had sort of died out, and they were just normal peanuts in bags, like you know, Nobby's nuts came out. It just stopped being a thing. But um, for a while there, it was like a sort of you know re every pub I ever went in when I was a kid. And there weren't that many, I suppose, because I was a kid. But like the local village pubs had those up. Like they used to just the peanuts would be on them, wouldn't they? So we'd do the same system, but with Kessinger. I can't wait to get my hands on a load of Kessingers. When I get this, you know, when I get to doing the numbers that Emma Kenny's doing, I'm not just going to sit in a fucking room and talking to the camera. Like I'm going to get doing stuff. I'm going to get Kessingers. Um, my uncle, the one that's most successful doesn't have any formal qualifications. She don't even put any, like, I suppose she'd probably put some money into the script writing and the editing, because I bet she can't be asked to do that. So I bet she just sits in front of the camera and just says stuff and other people, like, I'd, I'd, I'd consider it, but it wouldn't be fulfilling for me, even if money came with it. I'd rather have loads of Kessingers. <laughs> doesn't have a formal education. He started, um, he became the executive the of them, the Kelly. most popular she, she, Jude fan. She seems all right, I suppose. No, I didn't like the look of her show earlier. I didn't. Is it the same? I don't know who she is. She's just a woman that's doing a YouTube channel, and the channel seemed to me, and it's not about her being a woman, but it seemed to me to be quite sort of gore porn. Like there was a lot of murdered, head bashed in, ah, and then the sound effects and the sort of writing when I first turned it on. And I will concede, I've done a little bit of that myself with a couple of my Nicola Buddy videos like a little bit but the next one i'm doing actually actually sort of directly takes on certain aspects of that a little bit so i don't feel like i completely agree with it as a principle well, enough of this <laughs> she doesn't show gore no she doesn't but she dresses up the thumbnail and the title and the like you know it it she takes it to a sort of um I, I, it's what i said earlier i'm not going to go on tries in the world um but he started out as a dishwasher and he just happened to work work his way up, work his way up. Sadly, it's what AD would be if he had any fucking ability. Like what she does is what Alan would do if he had any ability. Up um, to the highest position. And Emma Kenny was against lockdowns and masks. Well, then she's a fucking idiot, isn't she, in some ways? I, I don't want to start on that, but like, obviously in hindsight, lockdowns were damaging for like, I don't know, children's education. But... <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't even start me on stuff like that. Like, you know, having, yeah, don't, don't yeah, don't even start me on that. I'm not, it's, we're beyond that now. But um, I don't really, I don't really uh, get a good vibe from her, and especially if that was her fe feelings on that. I, like, that's just another, you know, uh, yeah. Like, if you want, I can do an extensive rundown on why I don't like people like her and, like, say loads of mean things about her, like, accuse her of being selfish and stuff or whatever, but I, I, uh, now's not the time, is it? I just, on a quick glance at her channel, it's not for me. He was just happened to be very, very good with people. He was very charming. And also, uh, like, listen, I'm not saying if you watch it, you're a horrible person. It's a stylized form of true crime content. So it's not like you're going around doing horrible things. It's like, you know, sometimes people like to read the gossip pages or whatever. It's not like they're horrible, nasty people. Like, it's just a sort of, like, hamburgerization of the content in a way. But I don't really vibe with myself, so. ...person, and he just managed his life very well. He had a strong work ethic. Uh, but he doesn't have formal, uh, you know, a formal education or anything like that. And he's probably worth, probably between... 3.5 million to 5 million has a huge, you know, has a very large house um, in a very nice area. Okay, so there's another nuance to it. She was advocating for abused children that were locked away due to lockdown. Yeah, that's an interesting point. No, like, yeah. Um, but he was, you know, all, he was very narcissistic. All three of the brothers are narcissistic and that includes my dad and they're all successful in their own right. And my dad and my other uncle, who is a uh, lawyer with his own law firm, they have more formal education than the more successful brother. But anyway, this particular brother, who is the most successful and the executive of a food franchise, 
um, and I used to be very close. Like, for whatever reasons, I think it's a complex layer cake, but I don't vibe with whatever Emma Kenny was projecting. And I think what underlies it is a sense of morals, ethics, perceptions, um, a sort of self-oriented, Randian, like, you know, we live in a capitalist society that tells you to love yourself and that you're the most important one and, you know, main character syndrome, like, not narcissism, but, like, you know, like, it's not actually, like, pride is not a virtue, yeah? But it is treated like one. So there's a whole complex layer of stuff there that I can't quite say in one sentence, but just looking at the content, the way it was presented, I got a vibe and a feel, so it wasn't really for me. Some of the stuff you're saying in chat also, I don't really... I think I would have agreed with some of her thoughts and feelings on stuff like that. But thankfully, I just don't have to watch any of her content or care who she is. So I'm like, she's come up now and it's been a bit of a thing, but it's not really a thing, is it? It's just a nothing. It's a no thing. So. When I was young, um, he's one of these people, you will go out with him at a function and he'll find a woman to charm. Once we were sitting around a table and he was talking to this woman and he completely charmed the pants off of this woman. She got up to use the bathroom and he turned to me and he started telling me how, you know, he, th he thinks this woman has fallen for him and, you know, started laughing at her basically because he just thought he had her in the palm of his hand. And this is the type of person he was on the surface, successful, nice, charming, but he thought he was smarter than other people. And he shared his tricks and his tactics and his secrets with me of how he charmed people. And I honestly think that his charm is one of the keys to his success. Who are we talking about? Um, but, you know, he he didn't have the qualifications. He didn't have the education. What he had was a strong work ethic and a way with people that he could charm people. That was the key to his success. So, you know, qualifications, they're just a piece of paper. PCTV, interesting you should say that, because that's the vibe I felt from that content as well, was that an in independent person making YouTube videos, like you get to a certain level where you can then hand over some of the work to other people, or it might have been that she started out with that work being done by other people and it's built because of it, because it looks like it's churned out at a rate that any individual would find difficult to write, edit, record, produce. Like you would have to, in a three-day process, you would have to... Uh, research and edit so research and write the video in one day record the video on a separate day it takes an hour to record it I suppose with messing about and fucking up maybe a bit longer than an hour yeah like so a couple of hours an afternoon uh, like then you have to or a morning and then you have to edit it so you've got that day and the next day to edit it and it has to be out on YouTube okay you can wait a couple of days because you've got another video in the pipeline and if you get a few backed up you can release the one before it and the one before it and but she's on a sort of constant work if she's doing it herself all on her own and there's no nothing wrong with hiring an editor there's nothing wrong with hiring a script writer but like it takes away the personal authenticity of what you're doing in a way doesn't it you sort of turn up and read the script what what is it today i don't know i'll learn when i read the script i suppose like you know it takes away a certain personal authenticity in some ways um, or she might be writing all the scripts and then someone's just doing the editing for her you know to take that burden it might be somewhere in the middle but it felt very churned out formulaic like produced um so she does two full days of recording i don't understand that really like what and then they just make loads of videos out of it maybe it's that yeah like I don't know. Alan's going to be on Wumble. Okay, we'll have a look, maybe. I wanted to play my game today. I mean, I'm not saying that... What is Crimer? Crimer is... Uh, true crime is a content on the internet where people talk about true crime, yeah? And then Crimer is what we're doing now where we talk about the people that talk about true crime or what they were doing when they were all having a row about the Rusics or Alan's haters and them holding them to account, all the drama that goes along with it. The drama that goes along with true crime is true drama. Education isn't isn't important. Both my parents. Are I mean, she's on to listen. Fair enough to her for living her life and doing whatever she wants to do. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that someone could do a bit of a sort of, you know, tabloidy approach to true crime and be successful with it. I'll just leave her at that. I, I, she doesn't vibe with me. I don't vibe with her. I don't like her way she presents what she's doing and some of the stuff you're saying in chat about some of those political things. Um, I, you know, I'm not really 
but then it's just you people saying in chat stuff and like like I imagine if I bumped into a, a like um, event I'd just be polite and then just not talk to her very much and then just move on like I don't have to fight a battle against the woman um, it doesn't offend me that much it's just I wouldn't watch it if that makes sense like it's not my sort of content and again I'm not judging her on a, as a personal level because I don't know her at all I'm just like yeah 